Hi, my name is Raphael. I'm one of the servant leaders here at Heartway Church and want to welcome you to Heartway Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. Danny has prepared a wonderful message for you, so stay tuned for that. And afterwards, remember to go to our site and that way you can learn about all the things that we have going on here at Heartway Church. We have our Heartway Healers coming up as well as our men's and women's retreat. And after you're done, just pass by our giving tab and donate to what we have going on here at Heartway. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Man, so happy to be with you all. Thank you for coming on this rainy Sunday, kind of. But you guys are devoted. Okay, because I see you're here. I almost didn't show up, man. When I saw my dog so comfortable sitting in her little bed, it's like, oh, I'm jealous. But no, I love, I love to be here with you all and super grateful. Today's message is called Moving Different. Anybody know that phrase? You got to move different sometimes. If you're not connected to the culture, then you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> to move different means you're doing your own thing, okay? You're in your own lane. It's so easy for us as human beings to follow the crowd, especially if we don't feel confident within ourselves. Having a lot of people agree with us or be on our side makes us feel better about who we are, how we're looking at things, the way we're going about our life. We feel like there's power in numbers. But how many of you know just because a lot of people agree with something doesn't make it right, doesn't make it good, doesn't make it true, doesn't make it helpful and beneficial? Oftentimes, people compromise their values and their principles just to fit in with the crowd. Because being rejected by the crowd is so difficult and so uh, heavy of a burden to carry that we rather let go of our integrity and become chameleons just so that we can feel like we belong. And that's normal. As human beings, we all have this, this desire for belonging. And some of us, of course, actually all of us, we just want to be seen. And if we don't feel like we've received attention, we try and get it in very unhealthy ways. So sometimes, just to get attention from the crowd, people will do atrocities in our world, just so that for one moment, they're not forgotten, they're not ignored. God forbid that we're nobodies, you know? It's like the worst thing in the world for a human being, just not to be acknowledged, not to be seen, not to be heard, What's the big deal with being a nobody? Everybody wants to be a somebody. The whole spiritual game is about being a nobody. It's releasing and relinquishing your identity, understanding that this is just a game you're playing, a role that you're playing, like an actor in a theater. But it's not really you. That's why I always make fun of, like, Pastor Danny, you know, because, yeah, I'm Pastor Danny, but I'm not. And you've heard me say that a million times. And, sure, you're a police officer, and that's your, that's your role that you play, but it, that's not really your identity. And if we start taking our identities too seriously, that's when we start getting lost and tripped up along the way. So think of the example in the New Testament of Jesus and Peter. This is an example of compromising your values and your principles just to feel secure and not be rejected by the crowd. Peter was super close to Jesus, and he was saying all the right things. We've heard it before. The, I'll always be with you. I'll never leave your side. No matter what, I would never betray you. The more somebody has to say that, the more I'm suspecting that something else is going on. Because why you always got to, you know. But that was Peter. No, I'll never leave your side. I'll never betray you. I'll always be next to you. Jesus like, okay. Soon as they arrested him, now it's not a good idea to be associated with this Jesus guy. Now going against the crowd, now going against the conventional ways is going to come at a very high cost. Peter wasn't willing to pay that cost, so he denied him three times. I don't want to bear that cross. I don't want that consequence. He knew in his heart that he was going against his own integrity. But the price to pay for being true to himself was too high for Peter in that moment. 
We need people in this world who are willing to move different no matter what the cost may be. We need people in this world who are willing to move different even if that means you're going to stand alone. I made a commitment a long time ago that I would follow truth wherever it would take me. Even if that meant moving beyond the paradigms that I inherited in my youth. That has not been easy. But I've done it because the truth matters more to me than being accepted and being liked by other people. So when I started out in the world of uh, seminary, getting trained theologically, you know, I came from a very narrow, narrow bubble. The Christians I was hanging out with thought they were the only true Christians among all the others. And that kind of bugged me a little bit, you know. So I started to read books I shouldn't read, according to them. You know, I started to listen to people outside of the, the prescribed teachers that we were told we needed to listen to. And I started to expand my horizon. I'm like, why would I limit myself just to this little bubble of Christianity when there's this vast mosaic of different paths and traditions within our faith that I can learn from and glean from. So I became very ecumenical in nature. I wanted to read Catholics. I wanted to read Episcopalians. I wanted to read Pentecostals. I, wanted to, I just wanted to get from everybody that I could. Then after some time, I'm like, wait a second. Why would I just limit myself to Christianity? Why don't I go beyond and explore other religions and see what they have to offer? And then I got to a point where I was like, wait, why would I limit myself to religion? Why don't I explore other disciplines, philosophy, psychology, science? And how can I integrate all of this to help people experience spiritual growth and evolution in their life? And out of that journey, Hartway came to be. And Hartway is just like this weird, eclectic group of people from all different walks of life. We don't all agree with each other about what we're doing. I tell you guys that I don't even know anything, <laughs> honestly. I'm just like, here you go. This is just what I have to offer to you today, but test it out for yourself. It may be wrong, and then I may correct myself next week because, hey, we're just figuring this, this thing out. Life is an experiment. But doing this has come at a cost for me. It's not been easy. It's come at a financial cost because a lot of the support that Hartway received financially from uh, certain Christian institutions and groups was no longer available once I started to question the party line. It's come at a reputational cost. A lot of the folks from the world that I used to inhabit, you know, don't have the best things to say. Some people don't even think we're a real church. I had a family member say that once. Oh, nah. Danny's church is not a real church. That's not church, because that's not how church is looking like, supposed to look like, you know? It's come at a relational cost, because there's been some people who are like, oh, no, we can't be affiliated with you because, you know, that may not look good for us. It's come at a cost. And for many years, I felt alone. But what I've come to see is as a result of my courage to step out and follow truth wherever it leads me and maintain my integrity and be as authentic as I can be with humility because I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm right. That's the truth. But as I've gone about, I've taken this step of faith, guess what? Other people have responded to my courage and they've become courageous enough themselves to say, you know what, I've always thought like that, but I was too afraid to say anything. I always knew there was something off with the system and now you're giving me the freedom to be able, be able to do something about it and say something. Wow, I feel like I'm finally seen and heard. Yesterday, I spent two hours on a Zoom call with a spiritual community in Arizona. It's called Aldea. I didn't even know they existed. But this guy, Jake, their uh, lead pastor, calls me out of nowhere. He's like, Danny, I want to get you to come in and speak to our staff. I just became the pastor of this community, but for years they've been trying to take things in a similar direction as Heartway. And I've been following you. I've been seeing what you guys are doing in that community. I think it's amazing. Can you talk to us about what you're doing, 
why you're doing it the way that you're doing it, the values and principles that you all hold, and how you're able to make all of this magic happen. And I spent two hours yesterday talking to these folks in Arizona who are like uh, connected to us in such a deep way. They, have, they, they share our same DNA. That's it. And I, I told them, I'm like, you have no idea how privileged I feel to be able to even do this because I didn't even know other communities like us exist. But lo and behold, underneath the surface, they're popping up. Things like this are happening and people are reaching out. They're seeing what we're doing. All of that because of the courage that it took to just be true to myself at all costs. And now what was once weird and odd in terms of the shape and, and, and design of our spiritual community is becoming more and more of a norm for many folks. A lot of people see what we're doing here at Hartway as like a form of trailblazing. That's beautiful. It's incredible. Look at this passage of scripture. It's a theme that comes up often. It's this idea of moving out from the crowd, coming out from among them. Look at, look at what it says here. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. You know, if you read about Jesus's life, you'll find out very quickly that he was always with crowds. I mean, the crowds would follow him everywhere. But he was always trying to get people to move out from the crowd. So, and by the way, very few people were willing to do that. So there would be 5,000 people who would go to hear Jesus speak. And they'll go listen to a teaching. But it was only about 12 who stuck by his side and actually followed him. And the scriptures say maybe that got to like 70 at some point. Eventually all those people abandoned him and he was left back on his own. You got to learn how to be alone in this world, ladies and gentlemen, for real. Because at the end of the day, all you really have is yourself. That's the truth. And you're going to take yourself everywhere that you go. So I love what one uh, teacher says. He's like, you got to live in this world as if it's just you and God. When you live like it's just you and God, everything comes alive in a new way. You, you, you see things in a way that you never have been able to see them before. But... Again, it's this idea of having the courage to move out from, from the crowd. Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. So a lot of people go on the broad road. It's easy. It's what's popular. It's what everybody's doing. It's just the way things are. It's what's normal. And we just adopt it. Narrow is the road that leads to life. And Jesus said, few people find it. And it's really just because few people are willing to pay the price of walking on their own in this world. And again, as you choose to become your own person and, and carve out your own path, you don't have to do it with a sense of pride and make an identity out of it. You know, you can tell when it's someone in a state of immaturity and someone in a state of maturity, because those who are immature make an identity out of it. It's like, yeah, I'm a rebel. You know, I'm not like everybody else. Look at how different I am. And, and the energy behind it is you can feel something's off with that. When, you, when you're really carving out your own path, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to convince anybody of anything. You don't have to stand out. You're just doing you. This is just who you are. It's how it's going to go. And there's a big difference there. In, uh, oh, one other thing that I wanted to say. When you belong to God, you don't need to belong to anything or anyone else. You don't, need, you don't primarily belong to a religion. You don't primarily belong to a race. You don't primarily belong to a nation. You belong to God. So why would you limit yourself to something so small when the whole universe is given to you as a gift? The whole thing is there at your disposal. Transcend the limitations and understand that God is the creator of heaven and earth. So everything here is there for you. In the world of psychology, there's a term called individuation. It was coined by Carl Jung. Individuation is this idea of becoming your own distinct, unique person. 
carving out your own distinct particular path. It's about shedding the false layers of yourself and embracing who you really are. This is the greatest calling for the human being to follow. For you to be your own unique person, no matter what. Look at this quote from Joseph Campbell. He says, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. That is the privilege of a lifetime, is to be who you really are. Some people live their entire lifetime, and they don't ever get to experience the privilege of being who they fully are. Because they feel the need and the pressure to conform to somebody's expectations. Mama, daddy, brother, sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, you name it. Okay, because once you step out to become your own individual, guess what? Not everybody's going to be okay with that. Not everybody's going to like that. There is a price to pay. But it is the privilege of a lifetime to be who you really are. And it's worth, it's worth letting go of the money. I know some people who, for them, it's like, no, you know what? i rather choose the money just so I can be comfortable. And I respect it than be honest about who I am. Because it's going to come too, at too high of a cost. I know friends like this who deal with this with their sexual identity. You know? And they're, and they're in a Christian bubble where you're not allowed to, you know, be yourself. Exactly. This, somebody said, that's exactly why I left. Well, welcome to Heartway, brother. You know? <laughs> that's Marvin, by the way. Everybody say, hey, Marvin. Hey, Marvin. <laughs> that's awesome. It's worth it. I understand why people would say, nah, you know what, the comfortability, the security, I don't want to give that up. I respect it. I get it. Everybody's situation is different. But when you really, when you really understand that you're here to become the fullness of who God created you to be, and that becomes your number one life task is to step into that, you got to be willing to let go of the comfortability and the security. It is... The bravest thing in the world to be yourself in a culture that is constantly trying to tell you who you're supposed to be. And the greatest blockage of us being ourselves in this world is our fear of the crowd's opinion. Our fear of what other people think. If you're not willing to be disliked and to be disapproved of by the crowd... You will only ever be a shell of yourself in this existence. You got to be willing to take the shackles off. The shackles of your parents' expectations. The shackles of your family's opinion of how you should or shouldn't live your life. The shackles of the cultural and religious expectations that have been placed on you that you don't jive with. I constantly implore individuals to follow their curiosity wherever it may take them. It's so important for us to just get out of our bubbles for a little bit. You understand, we start in this world, and there's a bubble that's formed around us. And some of us never leave that bubble. We're just stuck in that bubble forever because we're too scared of anything outside of it. Take the journey. Be courageous. Go out there and explore. Take everything that is good. Discard everything that is bad. And be willing to do that with your own bubble too, with your own system too, with your own culture, with your own religion, with all the the box that you've had on yourself. Be willing to question that too. Because the problem with staying in your bubble is you think this is reality. And you have a hard time dealing with the fact that there are a multiplicity of realities. It's just what it is. And you're depriving yourself of so much beauty and goodness that is in this world 
when you're afraid to go and explore that which is distinct and different than you. At the very least, even if you leave your bubble and go out to explore and you don't like anything that you see out there, and you're going to come right back to this bubble because I like it here. Okay, even if you do that, at the very least, now you won't be as judgmental towards people out there. You'll have a little more empathy and understanding for people out there. Because you were willing to give people a shot. You were willing to, to just try and see where they were coming from. And now you have space within yourself for that which is distinct and different than you. What, that is, what a gift. We need more people who are willing to have hard conversations, who are willing to go beyond the box, go beyond the bubbles that they are in to see and, and enjoy all of the diversity in this world. God obviously loves diversity because there's just so much of it. So if you don't like diversity, that's on you. You, don't under, you really don't understand how things are. If everyone was supposed to agree with each other and be the same, this world would look a lot different. And I hear people saying, boring, boring, boring. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's boring. And it, but it's tough. It's tough to be unified when there's so much distinction. And that's why we do Heartway, to show people that no matter what differences and distinctions there may be in our ideologies, in our way of being in the world, the one unifier is love. Love can unify you with anybody. And some of you know this. But you can't get beyond like your family with it. Maybe it's like mom or dad who really disagrees with you. But that's mom and dad. So you're always going to have love no matter what. But they're crazy. <laughs> they're crazy. But you know what? That's, that's pops. So I'm going to love them. Okay, now just do that with everybody. Just do that with the world. <laughs> really, it's the same thing. Just do, apply that to everybody. Individuation. Being your, being your own Individual. Another aspect of individuation is owning who you are. You'll never be able to be your authentic self if you're not willing to own who you are, both the good and the bad aspects of you, both the light and the dark in you. To be able to get to a point in your, in your life where you say, I am what I am and what I am is enough. I'm a work in progress. So there's no shame in me being at this stage in my life. Humility is the cure to shame. You can do the dumbest thing in the world, but if you're just honest enough to say, I know, I screwed up, I'm working on myself, these are the consequences, I faced them, and I'm going to continue on my way. That's it! You don't have to be ashamed about nothing. Other people will try and shame you and guilt you, but okay, that's because you feel a lot of guilt and shame within yourself. So now I can be compassionate towards you. And that's the game. It's the whole thing. Let yourself be imperfect. Let yourself be weird and random. Give yourself the freedom to be exactly who you are. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But I promise you there will be people who love that person you've been trying to hide out of fear. And when you experience that love, when, when, when you can be your true, authentic self and somebody loves you like that, it makes all of it worth it. All of the pain that comes from stepping out and putting yourself out there and being raw and being real, it becomes worth it when you experience that love. You could conform to be accepted. That's always an option. But what good is it if everybody likes you, but you don't like yourself? It's not worth it to me. When you start moving different, sometimes the people that at one point were closest to you will become strangers. But at least you won't be a stranger to yourself. So you just keep going. That's it. Let me read to you this quote from Carl Jung. It's super long and kind of academic, but... I hope you'll understand some of it. The fact that a man who goes his own way ends in ruin means nothing. He must obey his own law. There are not a few who are called awake by the summons of the voice, whereupon they are at once set apart from the others, feeling themselves confronted with a problem about which the others know nothing. 
In most cases, it is impossible to explain to the others what has happened, for any understanding is walled off by impenetrable prejudices. You're no different from anybody else, they will chorus, or there's no such thing, and even if there is such a thing, it's immediately branded as unreasonable. He is at once set apart and isolated, as he has resolved to obey the law that commands him from within. His own law, everybody will cry, but he knows better. It is the law. The only meaningful life is a life that strives for the individual realization, absolute and unconditional, of its own particular law. To the extent that a man is untrue to the law of his being, he has failed to realize his own life's meaning. You guys kind of get that? I hope so. There's this wonderful scripture that says God has written his law in our hearts. It's this, it's this divine impulse to be who God created you to be. You've got to follow that wherever it takes you. That's my encouragement to you. And I'm, I'm speaking this to you from experience, which is why I can, I can say this as boldly as I say it. And I've, I, like I said, I have experienced the cost of it. But the reward on the other side has been so much better. This is the reward. Look at this community, the conversations we're able to have, the space we're able to hold for so many people of all different walks of life. It's so beautiful and it's so worth it. So we got to move different. When you move different, this affects every arena of your life. You start moving different relationally. Because now your energy is open and receptive. So you're not oppositional anymore. You're not an argumentative person anymore. You're not trying to convince anybody of anything. You're not trying to prove anything to anybody. You're not trying to fix people. You're not obsessed with judging people anymore. When you give yourself the freedom to be who you are, you know what starts to happen? You give that same freedom to everybody else. And people love you so much more because of it. But it's got to start with you. The people who are the most judgmental towards others are judging themselves the most. So your energy is open. Your energy is receptive. You're willing to let people be wrong about you. I'm going to say that again. You're willing to let people be wrong about you. Because trying to convince them of anything different is going to rob you of your peace, and that ain't worth it. So you be wrong about me. Be wrong. It's okay. I know what's right. This is, so, this is so difficult to own who you are. You become powerful when you own who you are, though, because most people are afraid to. Most people are afraid to. I mean, that's why we love celebrities that are like crazy. You know what I mean? Because there's like something about this person who dresses like a dragon at the Grammys, you know, that is just like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm just going to be me no matter what. Like, we love that. Okay, but there's unhealthy versions of that and healthy versions of it. You understand? I'm trying to explain to you, pompous versions of that are not the best. But it speaks to this deep impulse and desire that we have as human beings to just break out of the chains and be exactly who we know we're supposed to be, no matter what. Another thing that happens when you start moving different when it comes to your relationships is you become a lot more intentional about the energy that you allow into your space. You know what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate anymore. And you don't gotta be a jerk about it to anybody, but you understand that being around certain folks isn't gonna be the most conducive to your well-being. And so we're gonna just Move a little different. And I know you may not understand, but I still love you. <laughs> and that's it. That's really, that's it. Start moving different relationally. Another way this manifests itself. You stop approaching people from a standpoint of neediness. Like neediness. One of my favorite prayers by a woman that I quote often, her name is Byron Katie. She says, God, 
She says, if I had a prayer, it would be this. God, spare me from the desire for love, appreciation, and acceptance from others. I remember when I first read that statement, I was like, what? What do you mean? God, spare me from the need for love and appreciation and approval from other people. And then it was like the light bulb turned on inside of me. Yes, yes, yes. Why? Because I'm supposed to really just give that to myself. If I need love from other people, I'll give it to myself. If I feel lonely and I don't have companionship, I'll be a friend to myself. Instead of wanting you to constantly approve of me, why don't I approve of myself? You are the one that you've been looking for this whole time. And it doesn't matter how much approval and love and appreciation you get from other people. It will never, ever be enough for you until you are enough for you. Amen. That's really the truth. This, you see this in relationships all the time. All the time. I, that's a deep laugh. That's a deep laugh, but it's true. It's true. If, some, if you're with somebody who is not secure in themselves and they don't love themselves, you know, and I'm sure, listen, you could probably do better to show love, to show care and concern. And I'm speaking to myself. But at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't love themselves, doesn't matter how much you love them, it's never going to feel like you're doing enough. It's a never-ending thing. You are the one that you have been looking for. Another domain of life that begins to change when you move different is your finances. Yes. Because you understand now that your self-worth is not connected to your net worth. So you spend a lot less energy trying to give off the image that you got it all and more. Just to impress people, by the way, who don't really care about you. I'm friends with a lot of businessmen, and one of the things that I've learned is that there are a lot of people in this world who really follow this method of faking it till they make it. And sometimes it works. But also, what? Like, what? You're going to pretend to be somebody that you're not to get around certain people that are going to like a version of you that isn't even real? Like what? You can get so lost in the lives that you create for yourself. But again, what do you want? If, what you, if, you're, if your idol in life is success and having more, you'll do whatever it is you need to do. You'll sacrifice whatever it is you need to on that altar for your God. Right? Well, when God is put in his rightful place, you're willing to put anything you need to on that altar, including your, your very own identity, including your very own dreams and desires for your life. So this is a totally different paradigm. Listen, being flashy, that'll attract people into your life. The question is, are they worth having there? Are they worth having there if that's what they're there for? I know some people that are so wealthy that they can't even tell anymore who's genuine or not in their life. And they always got to kind of walk around thinking like, man, is this person really like here for me? Money comes and goes. Property comes and goes. I read an article the other day, a great NBA player that I used to love. It's a whole article on his, I can't pay my bills no more. He used to be Top of the world, playing for the best team in the world. I got my mansion, I got my cars. Up, oh, then I got a divorce. Up, oh, then this happened. Up, oh, then something else happened. Up, oh, then you had to retire. Up, oh, then you didn't make the right moves. I don't know what it is, but now I'm struggling to keep up with my payment for my house. So you could be up here one day and down here the next. Money comes and goes. So are you going to come and go too on the basis of what I have and don't have? You know, I'm already preparing for that conversation that I'm going to have with a lucky lady one day. <laughs> really? I'm just going to be honest. I don't plan on being broke. But if it happens, you going to be here? Because if not, bye, Felicia. 
I'd rather be by my damn self. <laughs> Woo. Can you tell that I've been feeling that one for a little bit? Because when I, I step out into this world, into this culture, and I see a whole thing happening here that is just toxic, man. So when you don't, when you don't need... When you don't need money to elevate your sense of self, now you can use your money to elevate others. And that's when life gets exciting. When you're able to use what God gives you to steward, by the way, it don't even belong to you, for kingdom purposes. Oh, my gosh. You become a generous spirit. I get so inspired, honestly, because, you know... I. And there's ways that people are, are generous outside of Heartway, which is beautiful. But when I get to experience firsthand the generosity of folks in our community, it touches me to the core. You know, and there's been people that have been here for years, for years, and they've devoted so much resources to what we're doing. Now, don't think that we're balling, y'all, okay? We, we, we need more support, everybody. <laughs> we're balling on a budget, you know? But my point is... Man, there's something about, and, and people do it, they do it gladly. They do it cheerfully. Wow. Another area where things change when you start moving different is your vocation. Okay, for the spiritual person, a job is never just a job. It's about calling. This is about purpose and passion, not just attainment and success. That's what it is. So even if you're doing the most menial of tasks, you bring dignity and honor to it. You got to mop up the floor, I'm going to mop it up with so much honor and dignity. There's nothing that's beneath me. I'm not doing this to be seen by others. You do this because your soul wants to give birth to something. And so you put all your love into what you're doing. Like the scriptures say, you do it all as unto God. You do it all for the glory of God, even if nobody recognizes you. I remember I used to be a, a part of a church, and when I was a volunteer, you know, I used to, there was one point in time where I was singing on stage every week in a church where there's thousands of people as a 20-year-old, you know, danger, danger, you know, that's dangerous, <laughs> you know. So in my own journey, I'm like, you know what, I need to just uh, pick up the garbage here for a little while, <laughs> And that's what I did. And I remember there was times when I would stay late. Nobody's at the church anymore. I'm throwing away the garbage. And one of the pastors comes up to me and says, Danny, you know what, what the problem is? Nobody really sees you doing anything. If you want to, like, step up and, and grow in your leadership in the church and become somebody in this organization, you, well, you can't just do things and nobody sees it. I know, that was an experience that I had as like a 19, 20 year old man. We're not doing it for that. We're not doing it for that. You know, so when you're able to do what you're passionate about and connect that with something that the world needs, that's when you're operating in your calling. And guess what? You may not be at a point in your life right now where passion and money are the same thing for you. You may have to do something that you're very unpassionate about for a little, by, a little while just to survive, just to make ends meet. But don't give up on the purpose. Don't give up on the calling. Put that first. And God's going to open up doors for you. You'll see it happen. And then last but not least, we got to move different mentally when it comes to our mindset. Okay, the person who walks with God, you got to open mind. You're self-aware. You're, you're willing to engage with people that have difference of opinion, alternative viewpoints. Your mind now is being governed by love, not by ego. Your path is now being guarded by wisdom, which means now you see a bigger picture. And you always have that bigger picture in mind. I remember I was hanging out with a buddy of mine at the bar. And we were having a conversation about something. And he was giving me some advice 
that wasn't good. And I was like, well, you know, um, I just don't think that's like the wisest thing for me to do. And he was like, why are you thinking about wisdom right now, dude? Like, it was Chinese for him. He didn't understand. He's like, what? why are you even thinking about wisdom right now? And I, I realized how odd that may sound to somebody who this is not even a, a thought in their mind. But it just shows you, shows you how different you will be. Look at these scriptures that describe the way we are in the world. You are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. And the next verse says the world will hate you. But I didn't put that, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be skipping some verses, y'all, because there's a lot of stuff, you know. <laughs> just, I'm just being honest, okay? But y'all go read the Bible, and, okay? Look at this one. But you are a chosen generation. I love this phrase, a peculiar people. It's going to be peculiar to people. What do you mean, wisdom? What do you mean, love? What do you mean kindness and empathy and compassion? What do you mean contentment? We're peculiar people. Embrace that. Embrace that. So that you can show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. I came out of the dark. I'm walking in the light now. Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth. There's this distinct flavor that you bring to things. There's a scripture in the New Testament. There's a scripture in the New Testament where there are a group of folks who were not followers of Jesus, but they had heard about Jesus and they knew of the kind of man that he was. And when they met Peter and one of the other disciples, the scripture says that those people knew that they had been with Jesus just by the way that these folks were talking and conducting themselves. They knew they were in the presence of that unconditional love. Your life is your message, everybody. You know that, right? Your life is your message. And I remind myself of that all the time because words are words. Anybody can come up here and say these words, literally. Anybody can come up and say words. But very few people can live a life that is its own message. Last verse here. Before I formed you in the womb, I chose you. And before you were born, I set you apart. You, 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 you hear the common theme here? Set apart. We are peculiar. We are distinct. We come out from among the crowd. Just to go, the point to come out is to go back in and bring some more. That's how it works. That's the, the problem with religion is they're like, yeah, come out, be separate, and let's just be our own thing. And now we're just irrelevant. And nobody feels welcome here because they don't look like us, talk like us, act like us. No, be in the world, just not of it. Participate in the culture, just don't be infected by the toxicity of it. But when you know that you've been chosen for this, when you know that God chose you to live out his purposes, you start to move different. You start to move different when you know that you're totally and completely loved. You start to move different when you know you've been forgiven. You start to move different when you know that your steps are being ordered. Every day when I get to the hospital, I park up on the seventh floor. I get this beautiful view of two hospitals side by side that I get to step into every day. And my prayer every day, something along the lines of, God, just make me a vessel. So that through me, people can experience your love, your presence, your power. Amen. And then as soon as I get in that elevator and I start walking inside, it is not a doubt in my mind that every interaction that I have that day is a divine appointment. And guess what? You could live your whole life like that. Make me a vessel. I've been chosen. So I'm going to move different now. Even if it means it's going to cost me everything. It's worth it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for choosing us, for calling us, for equipping us. We ask for your guidance and power in this moment to enable us to step into the fullness of who you have created us to be. 
so that we can become our own distinct, particular individuals with a unique identity, no longer conforming to society, no longer conforming to the world, but embracing our peculiarity and weirdness and randomness and giftedness and talent and personality. Because through this packaging, God, you want to bring something beautiful into this world. So we open up ourselves to your influence and the guidance of your spirit. Help us to no longer fear the crowd. Help us to be able to withstand disapproval, to be okay with rejection, because we know that we belong to you and you belong to us. And because of that, we don't got to belong anywhere else. We can be our own people, stand on our own two feet and follow your spirit and your truth wherever it may lead us. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Love you. We'll see you next weekend. Take it easy. Let's go heat.